Hi, I'm John Ratz, and I'm senior at Creighton Prep. Nice, 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 nice. And this is a uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a story I have dragged myself through, sometimes with an unfocused rage at a breakneck pace, and at others, the slow apathy of a sleepwalker shambling across the years, my skin thick enough to deflect anything trying to press in. This is a story of our family, about our most important pain, the reason that we are unhappy in our own unique way. Every group of survivors has its own guilt, and it is so much worse when the victim is still breathing beside you. This is my sister's story because she cannot tell it herself, because her history is a constant weeping and gnashing of teeth, not nearly all of it her own. There are some tragedies that need telling, and she has already suffered enough. It began with a mistake. Batten disease occurs in point zero, 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 three percent of births in the United States as a result of a genetic defect in the cell's membranes. Symptoms typically appear at a young age. My sister went in for a checkup in the second grade, typically manifesting as the loss of vision, the onset of epileptic seizures, a slow degeneration of brain function and speech pattern until she sounds more like an echo than a person, and a loss of motor function leading to her death because she no longer has the knowledge or the muscles necessary to keep breathing. We bitterly call it our reverse genetic lottery. It is the 25% chance bullet I dodged before I was even born. Patients have a life expectancy in the late teens to their early 20s. My sister is 21, and she is one of the lucky ones. Given enough arms to stand on, she can still stumble a few feet. Sundays, she speaks sense for a second. Most days, she latches on to a word or two with a constant repetition familiar to parrots. I must forgive her for having forgotten me. No one could accuse me of being a devoted brother. More often than she remembers my name, I sit as far away from her as our big house will let me, blocked out, body and soul, so I don't lose my mind too frequently. Even when she is under my protection, I try to keep from meeting in the empty in her gaze or throwing my words into the nothing that eats the space between her ears. You might call this some breed of hatred, or at least cowardice, and you might be right, asking the same questions that haunt my nights. But one day, as I walked by, I looked at her, a fallen majesty crowned with dirty blonde hair, and I wished, stronger than an enemy ever could, that she had never been thrown into this hungry world that devours her too soon, so slowly. Have you ever loved someone so much you wished that they had never existed, that their pain was just a possibility, and they only endured in a gentle oblivion? My sister's story is a tragedy she, my family, and I are still enduring. When the end comes, whimpering its way towards us, I wonder if I will weep and who my tears will be for.